A bog is a mire that accumulates peat, a deposit of dead plant material, often mosses, and in a majority of cases, sphagnum moss. It is one of the four main types of wetlands. Other names for bogs include maya, quagmire, and mesquite. Alkaline mires are called fen. They are frequently covered in ericaceous shrubs rooted in the sphagnum moss and peat. The gradual accumulation of decayed plant material in a bog functions as a carbon sink. Bogs occur where the water at the ground surface is acidic and low in nutrients. In some cases, the water is derived entirely from precipitation, in which case they are termed ombrotrophic. Water flowing out of bogs has a characteristic brown color, which comes from dissolved peat tannins. In general, the low fertility and cool climate results in relatively slow plant growth, but decay is even slower owing to the saturated soil. Hence peat accumulates. Large areas of landscape can be covered many meters deep in peat. Bogs have distinctive assemblages of plant and animal species, and are of high importance for biodiversity, particularly in landscapes that are otherwise settled and farmed. Distribution and extent Bogs are widely distributed in cold, temperate climes, mostly in boreal ecosystems in the northern hemisphere. The world's largest wetland is the peat bogs of the western Siberian lowlands in Russia, which cover more than a million square kilometers. Large peat bogs also occur in North America, particularly the Hudson Bay lowland and the Mackenzie River basin. They are less common in the Southern Hemisphere, with the largest being the Magellanic Moorland, comprising some 44,000 square kilometers. Sphagnum bogs were widespread in Northern Europe but have often been cleared and drained for agriculture. A 2014 expedition leaving from Atanga village, Republic of the Congo discovered a peat bog as big as England, which stretches into neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo habitats. There are many highly specialized animals and plants associated with bog habitat. Most are capable of tolerating the combination of low nutrient levels and waterlogging. Sphagnum moss is generally abundant, along with ericaceous shrubs. The shrubs are often evergreen, which is understood to assist in conservation of nutrients. In drier locations, evergreen trees can occur, in which case the bog blends into the surrounding expanses of boreal evergreen forest. Sedges are one of the more common herbaceous species. Carnivorous plants such as sundews and pitcher plants have adapted to the low nutrient conditions by using invertebrates as a nutrient source. Orchids have adapted to these conditions through the use of mycorrhizal fungi to extract nutrients. Some shrubs such as Miraca gale have root nodules in which nitrogen fixation occurs, thereby providing another supplemental source of nitrogen. Bogs are recognized as a significant, specific habitat type by a number of governmental and conservation agencies. They can provide habitat for mammals, such as caribou, moose, and beavers, as well as for species of nesting shorebirds, such as Siberian cranes and yellowlegs. The United Kingdom in its Biodiversity Action Plan establishes bog habitats as a priority for conservation. Russia has a large reserve system in the West Siberian lowland. The highest protected status occurs in Zapovnik's, Chidansky and Ugansky are two prominent examples. Bogs even have distinctive insects. English bogs give a home to a yellow fly called the hairy canary fly, and bogs in North America are habitat for a butterfly called the bog copper. Types Bog habitats may develop in various situations, depending on the climate and topography. By location and water source one way of classifying them is based upon their location in the landscape, and their source of water. Valley bog these develop in gently sloping valleys or hollows. A layer of peat fills the deepest part of the valley, and a stream may run through the surface of the bog. Valley bogs may develop in relatively dry and warm climates, but because they rely on ground or surface water, they only occur on acidic substrates. Raised bog these develop from a lake or flat marshy area, over either non-acidic or acidic substrates. 
Over centuries there is a progression from open lake to marsh, then fen and car, as silt or peat fills the lake. Eventually peat builds up to a level where the land surface is too flat for ground or surface water to reach the center of the wetland. This part therefore becomes wholly rain-fed, and the resulting acidic conditions allow the development of bog. The bog continues to form peat, and over time a shallow dome of bog peat develops. A raised bog. The dome is typically a few meters high in the center, and is often surrounded by strips of fen or other wetland vegetation at the edges or along stream sides, where ground water can percolate into the wetland. Blanket bog in cool climates with consistently high rainfall, the ground surface may remain waterlogged for much of the time providing conditions for the development of bog vegetation. In these circumstances bog develops as a layer, blanketing much of the land, including hilltops and slopes. Although a blanket bog is more common on acidic substrates, under some conditions it may also develop on neutral or even alkaline ones. If abundant acidic rainwater predominates over the groundwater, a blanket bog cannot occur in drier or warmer climates because under those conditions hilltops and sloping ground dry out too often for peat to form. In intermediate climates a blanket bog may be limited to areas which are shaded from direct sunshine. In periglacial climates a pattern form of blanket bog may occur, known as a string bog. Quaking bog A quaking bog or schwingmore is a form of bog occurring in wetter parts of valley bogs and raised bogs and sometimes around the edges of acidic lakes. The bog vegetation, mostly sphagnum moss anchored by sedges, forms a mass approximately half a meter thick floating over water or very wet peat. White spruces are also common in this bog regime. Walking on the surface causes it to move. Larger movements may cause visible ripples on the surface, or they may even make trees sway. In the absence of disturbance from waves, the bog mat may eventually cover entire bays, or even entire small lakes. Cataract bog A cataract bog is a rare ecological community formed where a permanent stream flows over a granite outcropping. The sheeting of water keeps the edges of the rock wet without eroding the soil. But in this precarious location no tree or large shrub can maintain a root hold. The result is a narrow, permanently wet habitat. By nutrient content bogs may also be classified by the nutrient content of the peat. Eutrophic bog A eutrophic bog, also called a mineratrophic bog, is one that lies on top of fen peat. As a result its water is rich in nutrients. They are found in temperate regions. Fens are eutrophic lowland bogs. Mesotrophic bog A mesotrophic bog, also called a transitional peat bog, contains a moderate quantity of nutrients. Oligotrophic bog Oligotrophic bogs occur where the groundwater is poor in nutrients e.g. in wetlands with nutrient-poor soils. They occur in several variants, raised bogs, sologenic bogs and blanket bog. Uses Industrial uses after drying, peat is used as a fuel, and it has been used that way for centuries. More than 20% of home heat in Ireland comes from peat, and it is also used for fuel in Finland, Scotland, Germany, and Russia. Russia is the leading exporter of peat for fuel, at more than 90 million metric tons per year. Ireland's board Narmona was one of the first companies to mechanically harvest peat, which is being phased out. The other major use of dried peat is as a soil amendment to increase the soil's capacity to retain moisture and enrich the soil. It is also used as a mulch. Some distilleries, notably in the Islay whiskey producing region, use the smoke from peat fires to dry the barley used in making Scotch whiskey. Once the peat has been extracted, it can be difficult to restore the wetland, since peat accumulation is a slow process. More than 90% of the bogs in England have been damaged or destroyed. In 2011 plans for elimination of peat in gardening products were announced by the government of the UK. Other uses the peat in bogs is an important place for the storage of carbon.
If the peak decayed, carbon dioxide would be released to the atmosphere, contributing to global warming. Undisturbed, bogs function as a carbon sink. As one example, the peatlands of the former Soviet Union were calculated to be removing 52 teragrams of carbon per year from the atmosphere. Peat bogs are also important in storing fresh water, particularly in the headwaters of large rivers. Even the enormous Yangtze River arises in the Ruergai peatland near its headwaters in Tibet. Blueberries, cranberries, cloudberries, huckleberries, and lingonberries are harvested from the wild in bogs. Bog oak, wood that has been partially preserved by bogs, has been used in the manufacture of furniture. Sphagnum bogs are also used for outdoor recreation, with activities including hunting and ecotourism. For example, many popular canoe routes in northern Canada include areas of peatland. Some other kinds of activity, such as all-terrain vehicle use, are especially damaging to bogs. Archaeology the anaerobic environment and presence of tannic acids within bogs can result in the remarkable preservation of organic material. Finds of such material have been made in Denmark, Germany, Ireland, Russia, and the United Kingdom. Some bogs have preserved bogwood such as ancient oak logs useful in dendrochronology, and they have yielded extremely well-preserved bog bodies with organs, skin, and hair intact, buried there thousands of years ago after apparent Germanic and Celtic human sacrifice. Excellent examples of such human specimens are Harold Scare Woman and Toland Man in Denmark, and Lindo Man found at Lindo Common in England. At Sayide Fields in County Mayo in Ireland, a 5,000-year-old Neolithic farming landscape has been found preserved under a blanket bog complete with field walls and hut sites. One ancient artifact found in bogs in many places is bog butter, large masses of fat, usually in wooden containers. These are thought to have been food stores, of both butter and tallio. Gallery. Sphagnum with northern pitcher plants at Browns Lake Bog, Ohio. Bog, Ostfriesland. Bogwood and boulders at the Stumpino near South Orkenmaid, Ayrshire, Scotland. Bog scene with October morning mist in Mukri, Estonia. Bibliography. Iton, William. General view of the agriculture of the county of Eyre. Observations on the means of its improvement, drawn up for the consideration of the Board of Agriculture and Internal Improvements, with beautiful engravings. Glasgow.